Hi everybody, this is Dr. Susan Brown, director of the Center for Better Bones. Today I wanna to talk to you about vitamin D and I wanna tell you, don't be fooled, vitamin D does prevent fracture. You might have seen a recent headline saying big research projects suggest that vitamin D doesn't prevent fracture. I'm gonna to talk to you, I'm gonna show you why that is not an accurate representation and why that study as a whole was not valid. So let me first say, I spent 30 years looking at how to maximize bone health, spent a lot of time looking at vitamin D. Actually in 2008, I wrote this article on vitamin D and fracture prevention, and we looked at several of the really excellent studies that showed vitamin D, if one takes it to the therapeutic level, in other words, to an effective level, reduces fracture by about 50%. And in fact, in this very same article, many other scholars are reported who agree with that same estimation. So you might say, gee, if Susan is saying this reduces fracture by 50%, how does Dr. Bolin there in New Zealand say that it doesn't reduce fracture? Now the problem here is the type of analysis, the type of analysis that these researchers use, the researchers who say vitamin D is not effective. And what they do is a, what is called a meta-analysis. And a meta-analysis is an overall analysis of all the studies. So these people got together 80 different studies on vitamin D. For example, this latest study, which was from New Zealand and published by Dr. Boland in Lancet just a few weeks ago, they, they looked at many, many studies on vitamin D and they look at the results of these studies and try to summarize what the overall outcome would be looking at, for example, 80 different studies. Now, the problem is that these 80 studies were done over many years and the vast majority of them, those studies themselves were flawed. If you look carefully at this work, you'll see the dose of vitamin D used was often 400 to 800 units, which we know is simply not enough. Even more, there's five specific issues you should look at when you're assessing the, the validity of studies on vitamin D. And I'm gonna list those five things for you just in one minute, and I'm gonna show you how the study that's making headlines saying vitamin D doesn't prevent fracture does not follow the necessary criteria to allow them to say that. So what are the five things that you need to know when you look at a vitamin D study, whether it's one study or whether it's 80 studies put together. You need to know the size of the population. Many of these studies that they did, the studies were too small to really make any valid suggestions. Fractures don't occur often, you need a large population to detect that. Number two, often these studies were too short duration. As you know, it generally takes two years to see a bone density change on bone density machines. So you can't do these studies in a short period of time. Number three, and most importantly to me, is that to be accurate, a study of vitamin D must not only document how much the person is given, but if the person reached the therapeutic threshold. We know, for example, from the work of Dr. Robert Heaney and others, you need at least a 32 NG of vitamin D in the blood level that is, to guarantee you're gonna have good calcium absorption. And this is known as an effective dose of vitamin D for fracture prevention, 32. In these studies, many, many of these studies mentioned in the current meta-analysis don't at all report the therapeutic level, what level the individuals reached. If you got a 30 or a 25 or a 20, you're not gonna expect to see any fracture benefit. You must reach a therapeutic level and the studies must tell you how much vitamin D you're giving and what the blood level turns out to be after a number of months. That to me is the most important thing that they've been underdosing the vitamin D. And generally these studies involve people that are very vitamin D deficient. So if you give 800 milligrams, you're not gonna really get very much any benefit, very little benefit at all. The fourth part is the fourth point is when they did give high doses of vitamin D, these studies use what's called a bolus. In other words, they would give 100,000 or even 300,000 units of vitamin D one time by injection. 
And that's already been shown not to be effective. That is not the proper way to do it. You need to dose vitamin D every day. And that's been well documented that that bolus treatment is not a successful way to deliver vitamin D. The fifth point, of course, is that we should look, if we have the privilege of looking at individual cases, we should look at secondary causes. For example, if you're taking a steroid that damages bone, like prednisone, it's gonna be very hard for vitamin D to be effective. Or if you're losing large amounts of calcium in the urine, or if you have uh, a parathyroid tumor or something like that, there's many medical causes, they're called secondary causes of osteoporosis that vitamin D is not strong enough to overcome. Here at the Center for Better Bones, we study each case, we see if there's any secondary causes, correct those if we can, and then build a strong platform of nutrition, lifestyle, exercise, and even stress reduction. So when thinking about vitamin D, let's just close by using our common sense. Some interesting researchers looked at vitamin D levels in native peoples living outdoors as best they could in some of these African areas. And you'll note that these people protect themselves from the sun. They try to get in uh, when it's really hot outside. But these people had a level of about 46 to 50. And I've written a blog on this if you want to look it up. But the point is natural people living in natural environments have about a 50, 46 or 50 level. What we're saying that this is the minimum level people should strive for. And you should take a vitamin D dose that allows you to get to that level. We say 50 to 60 level, indigenous people got high 40s to 50s. So I hope you have the patience when you see these headlines, something like vitamin D doesn't work, to know we need to go back to the studies. And in this case, the latest case of the Boland research, we need to look at 81 studies and see were they done accurately. And very few of them were. So I'm very confident to tell you vitamin D is a terrific fracture reduction agent. I again stand by the word that 50% of fractures can be reduced by vitamin D. And in fact, in nursing homes, studies have been well developed that fractures start to reduce within a few months because vitamin D not only helps absorb calcium for bone, but it also affects muscle. There's so many benefits of vitamin D in the prevention of many types of cancer, heart disease, diabetes, that I want you all to be careful to pay attention to this important nutrient and don't be fooled. My pleasure talking with you. We'll talk again soon later.